ASPS, welcome to my office. I'm so happy to have you join me today. So today, I'm going to be having a regular office day. I'm gonna be seeing several new consults, lots of new patients, and maybe at the end of the day, even I'll be a patient. Glad you're joining us. Let's get started. So patients are often nervous when they come to a plastic surgeon's office for the first time. And my goal was to make my waiting room really happy and friendly. We have beautiful bright art on the walls from local artists. We also have this book of actual patient testimonials. I know that if I were a new patient at a new doctor's office, I would definitely pick it up and look through and see in patients' actual words what their experience was like in my office. We've blocked out all the names. But over the last 13 years, we're sharing what patients have actually said to us about their experience. And you know it's real, it's authentic, and it really sets new patients at ease. They describe to me that they feel really good hearing about what other people's experience was in a really unbiased setting. Hi there, Sherlyn. Hi. Hi, Karen Horton. Nice to meet you. Likewise. So nice to meet you, And too. it's so good to see you, old friend. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks for being your friend. Come on back with me. Thank you. And so you have a 13 and a 16-year-old. I do. Sons or daughters? One of each. Son okay. first, daughter second. And what are their names? Will and Dana. Okay. And how are they doing? They're doing well. And how are you doing with the teenage years? There's, it's okay. We were just talking about it on the way down. Yeah. Every what do you find is the hardest part? Because I have two soon-to-be nine-year-olds, uh -huh. and I don't look forward to the teenage years. Yeah. Um, I think the hardest part is stepping down from the manager role into the supervisor role. Oh. It's a shift. Interesting. In roles. Okay. So after any major surgery, like a breast lift, mm -hmm. the first week is just going to blow by. Almost like yeah. you have the flu, like where did it go? You're so tired and you right. might feel tight, you might feel numb, and you also might feel really emotional. It's hard as a mom, and especially a working mom, uh -huh. when you finally do something for yourself. Mm -hmm. You have surgery, and you know, it's time, it's energy, it's downtime, it's money, mm -hmm. and it can be really hard to spend that time, money, and attention on yourself, and it's really common to feel guilty. You know, mommy guilt is a real thing. Mm -hmm. um, taking time off work, taking time off exercise. I know you do trail running five mm -hmm. times a week. That's a big deal. You're going to be right. taking a break from that. Yeah, yeah. and it it's, can be a little bit overwhelming, when your life suddenly just stops. So right. you need to know this going in. I would recommend that you take at least two to three, three weeks would be better off okay. work. Hi, Annette. Hi. How are you? Hi, good. good. So How good to doing? see you. You too. So you're almost at your one year anniversary. I Congratulations. Yeah, thanks. How are you feeling? I feel pretty good. Mm -hmm. You look great. Yeah, thanks. Work's going well. Yeah. Are you mm -hmm. able to do everything that you want to do? Um, yes. Awesome. Yes. What we're going to do today is we'll take some photos, but we're also going to be looking um, to see is there anything we could do at one year after your breast reconstruction to improve symmetry. And so our options are doing some scar revisions. Mm -hmm. I know we are looking at some areas on the side. Sometimes we redo a scar to make it look even nicer. Yes. Uh, we also have the option of doing what's called fat grafting. Uh -huh. And fat grafting involves harvesting fat by way of liposuction, so you get some bonus liposuction, mm -hmm. and injecting it into the area of your breast reconstruction mm -hmm. to help to round out the bottom of the breast, because yes. we know you have a natural breast on one side, and right. that's always going to droop and hang a little bit different from a reconstructed breast. Mm -hmm. When we do fat grafting, we can add some additional fat to your deep flap. Okay. That will help to add more volume. Mm -hmm. We don't expect all the fat cells to survive, right. but we have the advantage of having less fat in your donor site. We're gonna talk about you and your lifestyle, and then we're gonna talk a lot about your neck. Okay. And the main thing I wanna get to know today is what are your goals for okay. your neck? because your goals become my goals. Okay. I will examine you today, and that means I'm gonna get really close to you, and I'm gonna look, and I'm gonna touch, and have okay. a look at your neck. Okay. And I'm gonna tell you about all of the options. Okay. Anytime you wanna treat a part of the body, there's several options, and okay. some of them might be non-surgical, some of them might be minimally invasive, some of them might be big surgical. And I will, I'll always tell you all the things that are available to you, okay. but if I feel like there's one particular thing that would help you achieve your goals the best, then we'll zoom in on that. Okay. And that we'll talk sense. about the pros Great. and the cons, the risks, the benefits. And I really, I treat you as if you were my sister or my good friend. <laughs> what would I recommend for you? Okay. And I have no problem saying no, if I think okay. you should save your money or it won't help at all. Okay. I just want to give you good information so you can make an educated decision about what's right for you and your body Great. and your face and your okay. neck. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to examine you bending down, which you never want to take a selfie like this. And what I'm doing is I'm pinching some fat. So you actually have a good fat collection and you also have really good skin tone. 
I'm gonna have you tilt your head back all the way. All right, so that shows me that you actually have a little bit more fat on your left side than your right, and I feel some firmness here, which could be related to your past injection. Okay, and you don't have much in the way of jowls, and mostly you have really good skin tone. So I do think that you actually are a really good candidate for liposuction. So Mary Passace is my patient coordinator, and Mary, you've been doing this for a long time, haven't you? I have, uh, 25 years. When a patient calls for mm -hmm. the very first time, and they might be nervous and calling the plastic surgeon's yeah. office, what do you say to them, and, and what is your initial interaction with them? Um, I think, for the most part, I, I get to know them, like what their history is. I ask them very blunt questions, like, so what, what's going on? Are you having an issue at this time? Um, I also try to get to know a little bit of their background so that when they come in, we have that information. Um, but for the most part, it's really understanding why they're calling and what their concerns are, which is really important for us to have when they come in so we know what we're addressing. You are two months just about mm -hmm. out from your breast reduction, and how are things feeling? Uh, like pretty good. You know, I I'm starting to worry a little bit about like sports and getting mm -hmm. back into that, but otherwise, like feel really healthy. Great. Like, so you want to get back to sports? Yes. Tell me what you're worried about. Um, for soccer, I'm just worried about like contact and like making sure that any tenderness is like mm -hmm. kind of safe to go with. So I usually say at six weeks out, you can do whatever you want. You still have a few little scabs underneath, maybe, so we'll we'll have a look at that. But um, at this that point, still draining a tiny bit. Yeah. Okay, yeah. and that's really common. Your wounds can drain for several months after surgery. Mm -hmm. The bottom of the breast is where fluid builds up, okay. and you know it's just like a wet scab, so yeah. it's normal for it to drain. But at this point, I actually want you to get back to sports. Soccer's totally fine. You cannot okay. hurt anything. Mm -hmm. Even if somebody bumps into you, I don't want you to worry about it. Okay. But you might feel comfortable having a little pad there, something mm -hmm. like a little panty liner. Maybe a sports bra for extra support mm -hmm. might make you feel better, but you can't hurt anything. Awesome. So I say go for it. Hi there, I'm Emily Suspaniak. I'm a nurse practitioner here at Dr. Karen Horton's office, and today we're going to be treating Dr. Horton. Um, it's actually more of a touch-up. We just treated her actually uh, about a month ago, but she has pretty stubborn forehead muscles, so we're going to go ahead and use an injectable wrinkle reducer to smooth some of that out. We're also going to be treating her lateral cantal lines, also known as the crow's feet or the smile lines. So this is a product that takes about a week to activate, so it's not an instant result. A little bit of swelling at the injection site is normal for about 15 to 20 minutes after treatment. So often we do her treatment in two phases. So I'll treat her, she'll come back in two weeks for her perfection check, and then we will have to usually add a few more units. We don't want to get rid of all of her movement. She likes to be expressive, especially with new patients and consultation. She doesn't want to have that sort of stiff, uh, unfriendly forehead. So we want to make sure that we're not over treating her, but she does usually require a touch of about two weeks. What age do you see people getting crow's feet done on average? I would say 30. 30. Smile big, relax. I didn't even notice my crow's feet until late 30s, but oh, no, they were there. I smile a lot. Smile big, relax. Finish. Truly a lunchtime procedure. Let's freshen up my powder and I'll be good to go. So it's been such fun having ASPS with me today. It's such an honor and a privilege to take care of my patients and it was such a special day to share part of it with you. But at the end of the day, the very best thing is coming home and seeing my kids, the Horton twins. Aww. Let's say goodbye. Bye, ASPS.